and welcome back to Home and Style with Joy. Today I'll be sharing with you how I updated my kitchen installing mirrored backsplash. If this is something you'd be interested in, you may want to try this at home yourself, just stay tuned. But remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on those post notifications, and let's get started. Before we get started, I want to go over a little bit about what I use to get the mirror backsplash look behind me. First, of course, you'll want to grab your mirror tiles, and I have a 3x10 that I got from Amazon, and I will link them in the description box below. They come about 55 per box, and you get about five and a half of these glass bricks. The next thing you want to do is grab a coordinating mirror switch plate and these are the ones I got. I will also link them in the description box below. But you want to get these because most of the time we have those white switch plates and you just want a nice cohesive and coordinated look. So you want to finish off your plates um, with this mirrored plate. The next thing we're going to grab is another caulk gun and Gorilla Glue. This is actually the same one that I used in the last video for my mirrored squares um, in the bathroom. And if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check that out because we're going to upgrade this whole house, right? And we're going to all do it together. We're going to upgrade our homes. The next thing you want to do is grab a glass cutter. I grabbed this one from Lowe's. Um, I will try to provide a link for that, and it will be in the description box. It is the Blue Hawk. This is good for making straight edge cuts, which um, if you have like an easier project, this will do fine. But if you have a more um, intricate project where you need to cut 90 degree angles, you're going to need a wet saw, which is what we ended up having to do. And I asked my husband to help me with the wet saw portion of that because I wasn't too comfortable with um, those heavy tools. But you will need a wet saw um, to do some of the more intricate cuts that you will see it later on in the video. So without further ado, let's hop into how I finish this look. So here we go. You're going to do one, two, three dots. Place it on the wall. And I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to get closer. We're going to keep going. Okay. I'll stand from this angle this time. One, two, three dots. This is especially good if you ever need to take it off. You'll have to get a uh, um, screwdriver flathead and just pry it off. Okay. So here we go. One more time. One, two, three. Okay, now I'm getting close to the outlet, so I am going to have to take measurements here to see where I want the cuts to go. Then I'm going to take it over to the glass cutter and actually cut the piece out so that the glass can fit around the outlet. Now 
Now, I know I kind of blocked this off, but no worries. I'm using the glass cutter right now, but I will go into detail a little bit more in this video. Okay, so now that I'm making some progress, you can see the subway pattern starting to emerge really nicely now. Okay, so here I got to film at the right angle to show you how the glass tile cutter works. And it just has a blade in there that you run across and then you snap it and it makes a clean cut. So now I'm gonna place my newly cut five inch tile right here in the corner. And this is how I get that subway pattern by alternating a five inch and a 10 inch. The five inches I always like to start on the ends or in the corners. Okay, so as you can see, I am now on the other side of the kitchen and I just wanted to show you um, what you may encounter when making your cut. So I had to have my husband help me with this. He pulled out the wet saw and made this cut so that it can fit over the light switch. Like so. And then that way when we put on the new light switch, which is the mirrored light switch, it'll go right over that. But we needed those to come out. And now I'm gonna put on the glass switch plate and I'm just loosening up the screws so that the switches will stick out a little bit further because a glass plate is a little bit different. It doesn't have that recessed indentation, so it sticks flat to the wall. So I need the light switches to actually stick out just a little bit further. And loosening those bottom screws is what helped me achieve that. Okay, so I'm just gonna speed it up just a little bit because I am finally at the finish line. I am gonna straighten up and clean up. I've installed all the switch plates. They're pretty easy. You just screw your new mirror switch plate back in. But as you can see here before, I had a panel, a security panel that I had the security company come out and move because this is my coffee station and I just want it to look luxurious and I just felt Felt like the panel being there was an eyesore so I'm happy to see it gone and I can't wait to style my coffee station again Okay, now I'm gonna clean and polish up all the mirror backsplash in the kitchen using a glass cleaner that I love. It is called Sprayway. If anyone wants to check that out, I will link it in the description box.
And now here is the finished product. We'll just take a quick tour around the room so that you can see what the backsplash looks like and how it just really puts the cherry on top in this kitchen.